We're continuing on the AP Chemistry Chapter 12 packet. We're on page 7, and we're going to be focusing on finding activation energy of a reaction, and we're going to get it from knowing the rate constants at different temperatures. So you can find the activation energy of a reaction if you know the rate constants at different temperatures. So what's going on here is we have a reaction. We carry out that reaction at a certain temperature, like we did in the lab with the crystal violet, for instance, and we graph it and we find out its K value, the rate constant. We don't even know if it's first order, second order, zero order, it doesn't matter. We just, we just know the constant at this temperature. Now, if you do the whole experiment all over again, but do it at a higher temperature, of course you'll have a higher rate, so you'll have a higher rate constant, a larger number. So if you could find a whole bunch of temperatures and a whole bunch of rate constants, you can find a relationship that allows you to calculate the activation energy. Now the way to do that is to plot 1 over temperature in Kelvin and on the y-axis, and then the ln of the rate constants on the y-axis and you're going to get a graph that looks like this, which is supposed to be a straight line. And when you find the slope of this line, it equals negative activation energy over R, where R is 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. This should look vaguely familiar to you from a previous chapter. In fact, if you had substituted vapor pressure here, we could have found the heat of vaporization right here, which was the Clausius-Clapeyron equation that we learned a while ago. So it's interesting, very interesting, that if you do the rate constants with activation energy, it's the exact same type of calculation. It's just very interesting. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your graphing calculator, and you're going to be doing this right now to practice. You're going to make this list 1, and you're going to make this list 2. Okay, you're only going to go up to this 2.9 number because there's no data below that to put in your graph. All right, so that's going to be great, but that's not what you're going to graph. Well, you could graph it, and when you do graph list 1 and 2, what you're going to find is if you graph temperature in Kelvin, and rate constant, you're going to get this kind of a graph, which was similar to the vapor pressure graph. So now what you want to do is you want to turn that into a line, and the way to do that is going to be with the second graph that we learned. Okay, so you're going to want to make your list 3 is going to be your new x, and in this case it's going to be 1 divided by parentheses list 1 plus 273 because you have to change it to Kelvin. Okay, so you're going to do that. Then your list 4 is going to be your new y, <clears throat> and that's going to equal the ln of list 2. And then when you graph that, you're going to get this graph. Then you're going to ask the calculator to calculate this for you, the a and the b. So you're going to get your a value to be negative 12, 174, and your B value is going to come out to be 30.7. So what that tells you is you could find the activation energy now. So I'll do that over here. Uh, the slope is negative 12, 174. That's going to equal negative activation energy over R, which is 8.31. And this number comes out to be 101165. 101165. And that's going to be in joules per mole, which you could, of course, make into kilojoules per mole, which would be 101 kilojoules per mole. And this is your activation energy for this reaction. Okay, so we got the activation energy. 
But now we need to do a fill in the blank. A fill in the blank is going to be how do we find this answer right here. So we're going to go back to our line equation and we know that y equals ax plus b. So the y is the ln of k. The a is the slope which the calculator told us, negative 12, 174. The x is going to be 1 over temperature in Kelvin. And the intercept the calculator told us was 30.7. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to put in your data for each of these. So for the first example that we're looking for, we know that the temperature is 70 degrees. So for that one, we're going to do 70 plus 273 over here. And you're still going to have your negative 12, 174. You're still going to have your 30.7. And that's going to equal the ln of k. And when you do all the math for this, you're going to find out that k equals 315 Kelvin. Which is the same thing as... Um, oh, whoops, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That's a temperature. That's the next one. The answer is 8.3 10 to the minus third. 8.3 10 to the minus third is the K. Okay, then you could start substituting for the next example. I'll write this in. 8.3. Times 10 to the minus third. So that goes here. 8.3 times 10 to the minus third. Now if you're going to do the example below with the 3.5, that's going to be right here. So ln of 3.5 times 10 to the minus fourth equals negative 12, 174. 1 over T, this will be in Kelvin as you know, plus 30.7. And now you're going to do your math. And this is where the temperature comes out to be 315 Kelvin. 315 Kelvin, which is the same thing in Celsius as 42 degrees Celsius. So if you're going to fill in the chart, of course, you're going to want to put in a 42 right here for the Celsius. Now let's see if this makes sense. It makes sense for the answer above the 8.3 because this is a faster rate constant and this is a higher temperature, so that makes sense. And then for the 42, you know that 42 fits in between here and 3.5 also fits in between there. So it does make sense for these answers. Okay? Now, let's suppose that you were given only two uh, values. Let's say you had to find the activation energy and you were only given this in the chart. Two Ks and two temperatures. Then you could use this form, the point slope format of the equation. Okay, so remember when we did this with vapor pressure, it's the same deal. There are five variables. So one, two, three, four, five variables. And if they give you four out of the five, then you just solve for the one that's missing. Okay, so there are five variables. I'm just going to remind you here. Please make sure that you always use Kelvin. And the activation energy has to be in joules per mole. So of course, that's going to be one of those tricks on the test that you don't want to be the, uh, the victim of, of forgetting to change.